In our continuing series on mountain lions at Colorado Parks and Wildlife, we're in North Boulder at Wonderland Lake. I'm Mark Johnson. Thanks for being with us. And joining us is Jason Deach, Area Wildlife Manager, as we talk about mountain lions. Jason, uh, first off, thanks for being with us. And secondly, mountain lions are such a, an amazing creature. When we do have those encounters, if you do are lucky enough to have a chance to see one, I think a lot of times folks are just awed by the fact they're actually encountering one in, in the wild. Yeah, that's right, Mark. When we, when we think about mountain lions, uh, they are really a unique animal um, in that they're, they're a true carnivore. So, you know, their teeth are sharp. They eat meat. And that's all they meet, eat. And they're an ambush predator. So it's a lot different than like a bear or, or other animals you might um, encounter. They're just very unique. We think about like a, like a house cat and how lazy they seem for most of the day. And then <laughs> And then the things they can do if they want to jump up on top of a table or a dresser, um, leap from here to here. And then you take that and you multiply it um, by a few times and you have something the size of a mountain lion. Um, it's incredible what these animals are capable of as far as making 20 foot leaps and, uh, and really uh, you know, hiding, uh, using cover to hide and, and uh, their hide to camouflage themselves. They're really an, uh, just a fantastic animal that a lot of people don't ever get the chance to actually see. We've had 25 uh, human attacks by mountain lions in the state of Colorado since 1990. So that, that is a rarity. So when you are out and about, that, that's not the normal uh, conduct by a mountain lion if you were to encounter one, correct? That's correct. Yeah, typically those animals that are involved in attacks, um, they're, they're sick in some way. Um, uh, you know, rabies, or maybe they're severely underweight. Maybe their their large canines are broken, and uh, the animal is so old that it's having a hard time finding uh, its natural prey, and so they start turning and looking to other things. There also have been young, inexperienced juveniles or subadults that have been associated with these types of incidents, but attacks are extremely rare. In fact, outside of work, where which of course I've I've trapped and darted um, a lot of mountain lions over the years, but outside of that, um, you know, even I've just very rarely, only if there's snow on the ground, sometimes I'll see some tracks in the snow, um, and uh, uh, it's just extremely rare to see a mountain lion. You know, we think about, you know, being in bear country, and the advice is always making a lot of noise, those kind of things. Are there similar rules for those of us when we're out hiking and out in the uh, mountain lion territory to, to be making some noise and make sure we're, they know that we're there? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right, Mark. We want to make sure that we're making noise and uh, because we don't want to startle any animal. And uh, that way they know that we're there. And if we encounter a mountain lion, we want to make ourselves look big and strong and tough. Uh, something that they don't want to mess with, something that we are not food. Uh, we are something that they want to stay away from. So, you know, talking in a nice, firm, loud voice. Um, you want to make yourself look bigger. So something like opening up your jacket and, and, and you know, making yourself look bigger. Grabbing, grabbing a stick or grabbing a rock. Um, grabbing something to, again, increase your wingspan or, or make yourself look bigger, but without having to crouch down. You don't want to make yourself look smaller. So snap something off of a tree or pick something off off the side of the trail. Um, make yourself look bigger that way. And you don't want to run, correct? No, you want to, you want to um, face the animal um, and you want to back away from it, but stand tall. If you have children with you, by you, um, same thing. You don't want them screaming. Um, you want them to get uh, with you, either holding hands or if you can, uh, put them on your shoulders, pick them up, and, and have them make you even look bigger. If they're wearing, wearing a jacket, um, have them open it up too. And, uh, and then uh, just back away, but don't run because a lot of times um, for, for wild animals that are, that are these carnivores, they, it triggers that instinct to chase. Sure. You know, cat and mouse, right? So uh, we don't want to trigger that instinct in them to, to just chase. Um, and 
and you'll know it, the animal should just immediately run. Uh, but if it if it doesn't, if it if it is is staring directly at you, ears forward, really interested. Okay, if its feet are right under it and it's and it's coming towards you, um, that's that's not good. Right. And that's what we want to try to avoid. Twitching tail. Twitching tail. Yep. That's right. Yep. Um, so all those are signs that um, we want to make sure that that we make ourselves look as big and as strong and as tough as possible, um, and and be prepared. You know, if you, if you are attacked by a mountain lion, um, you fight back. You fight back. And you fight back as hard as you can with whatever you have, um, whether it's your bare hands or whether it's a rock, a stick, um, a, a trekking pole, you know, whatever you have. Um, and, and go for sensitive parts of the animal like, like the eyes. Um, again, th these animals, you know, they, they um, just like we say with bears and, and trash, you know, bears are looking for the simplest way to get calories. Sure. It's the same thing for mountain lions. So in, in all wild animals, they're looking for the simplest way to get calories, to get food so that they can survive. So if they realize, man, this is not worth it, I've, this is not okay, I could end up getting the short end of the stick on this deal and, and damaging um, something that I need in order to survive, then, then they're going to they're gonna head somewhere else. So often in today's society when people are out hiking, we like to put the earbuds in, right, and kind of get lost in our music. They, when you're in mountain lion country, that's probably not the best idea. You're not paying attention. It, it takes you. I would say, um, yeah, I, I am not a fan of of uh, listening to uh, anything through my ears, uh, putting anything over or in my ears while I'm outside in nature. Um, you know, really, actually, it, it's much better to just listen to the sounds of nature. It, it really is. It's better for you physically, mentally. So keep that in mind too. And and yeah, get those earbuds out of there because it really does. Uh, deter from your from your own natural senses as far as being able to pick up on, on cues um, uh, and, and hearing something like a mountain lion or a bear. You know, I'm thinking too, uh, what about bear spray or an air horn that some people carry when, when they're out? Uh... Yeah, so here we have some bear spray and here's an air horn and just like you were alluding to Mark, we there's no formal testing on mountain lions like there is on bears for these devices, but we think when you're in the back country or, or the front country for that matter, and, and you're enjoying the outdoors, these are, these are two things that uh, will be very helpful uh, for deterring wild animals like mountain lions. Um, sound producing devices, uh, these, are, these are great. Not only will they scare the animal away, but they're also gonna alert others to what's going on. Other people are gonna, if there's other folks in the area, then they're gonna look and, and see what you're up to and see if you need help. And, and that's going to be helpful for you uh, because if you could get more people around, um, that's going to be a deterrent for a wild animal like a mountain lion. Um, and then you're gonna, with the pepper spray, um, you're gonna wanna aim for the face on this. You want it to get in their eyes, their nose, because it, it's a temporary irritant. And they're gonna say, man, this is not what I was expecting. I don't want any part of this. Time for me to get out of here. So you do have to be fairly close um, with, with something like this. Um, I think it's it usually typically recommends about uh, 25 feet or so. Okay. That's pretty close. So, um, and if it's really windy out, then you gotta, you gotta take that wind direction into consideration too, or just realize or understand that when you spray this, it might deter the lion, but it might also come back and hit you a bit. And if, and if that's the case, then you need to go and find some fresh water and flush your, flush your eyes and your nose. Hey, how about living in the Front Range? Um, what should we be aware of? You know, we're standing out here at one of the lake right now. There's, there's beautiful homes all around us right here. We live in this country and so do the mountain lions. Things we should think about, are there attractants? Are there things that maybe we don't want outside? Uh, certainly got to think about pets when we put pets outside. So maybe talk about some of that. Yeah, absolutely. So something that would be uh, attractive to a, a mountain lion, we have to be cognizant of around our homes. So that could be something as simple as a, a bird feeder, as far as attracting uh, birds and squirrels, uh, our trash, attracting raccoons, skunks, our pets, especially if we're letting pets out um, in, in that, that morning and evening time of day. Um, that's an area, a time of day when mountain lions are really active. And it's something that uh, we have to realize that um, we might not see them, but they're watching us. And 
uh, if you're letting that, that animal out, um, there, is, there is no dog out there that has a chance with a mountain lion, okay? These are, uh, in, and because I, I've had the calls, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, Pit Bulls, I, they have all been attacked, even Bobcats actually for that matter, sure. a much smaller cat. Mountain lions are the ultimate predator really, aren't they, in our state? They, they really are, they really are, and they, they do a good job of, of, uh, of finding their natural prey, but, but as we continue to develop and find more uh, places to build homes um, in this beautiful uh, part of Colorado, we have to remember that you know, if we're going to take our animals out um, outside in, in morning or evening, we should be going out there with them. Keep them on a leash and go out there with them um, and then bring them right back in. Well, as we were talking, too, about what attracts mountain lions, if we've got something out around our property that attracts deer, deer are going to attract mountain lions, right? So you've got to think about a little bit beyond just the mountain lion attractants. That's right, and that's one thing a lot of people miss, especially um, especially in certain uh, neighborhoods where they, they love to see the deer, they love to have deer come in their backyard and, and have fawns, um, but they realize what they, what they forget to realize is, is that if they're creating that natural habitat, let's say by um, not, not cutting any of their yard, not doing any trimming, cutting of their grass or anything, and just letting it grow up natural, that, that, is, uh, that is nice for the deer, but that means you're also gonna have mountain lions that are gonna come in and say, hey, this is fair game. Um, and we've had, I mean, over the years, I've even had calls of, of people letting out their dog and, and the mountain lion was actually on the roof of the house wow. and, and jumped off the roof and grabbed the lab and just ran off. Um, so, you know, it's, it's definitely a real thing in Colorado. It happens uh, with these mountain homes. Um, and, and even coming into, uh, uh, coming into town, in fact, we've had um, a couple mountain lions that they'll naturally follow waterways. So if you live along a ditch, if you live a, along a river, stream, um, you are going to have coyotes, bears, mountain lions following those waterways. It's just natural for predators to do that. And, and, you ha and it's really easy for them to then migrate or traverse a lot of different terrain um, and get uh, actually quite far out east. We've had mountain lions even east of I-25 um, that, that have ended up in neighborhoods and subdivisions uh, that we've had to go um, uh, dart and, and relocate. Jason, how about if there's a, we have an encounter, if we're out and about, we see a mountain lion. If uh, we see a deer that's been cached someplace by a mountain lion, should we report that kind of thing and let you folks know that uh, there's been a sighting in our area? Yes, absolutely report it. Um, we try to keep track of all the sightings and encounters. Um, it helps us keep track and helps us to alert neighborhoods um, and and all you have to do is if they want to get a hold of us immediately you can call any law enforcement agency we're dispatched through state patrol dispatch 303-239-4501 and that's how you get a hold of the on-call officer so there's always a, a wildlife officer on call 24 7 and um, that's if you have an encounter on a trail or, or um, you know, something is, you, you go to head to work and you go out and there's a, a dead deer with, with a bunch of pine needles and, and uh, you know, all you can see are a couple legs sticking out, right? That's, that is a mountain lion that's, that's cached something uh, to come back to for, to eat later. And that's not a good situation for, for you to put yourself in. So let us come help you out with that. And so give us a call. Um, if it's during normal business hours, one, our offices will be open. You can also call our, one of our offices and, uh, and get an officer out that way. But uh, you know, we can also help with the education component as well. Uh, maybe provide some more information on what to do and where to go from there. Well, it's uh, an interesting existence here in the Front Range as we're sharing uh, this terrain, obviously, with, with wildlife. Great information today. Thank you. Yeah, you bet, Mark. All right. Jason Deach, Area Wildlife Manager for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. For more information, always go to the Colorado Parks and Wildlife website. Once again, as we wrap things up, I'm Mark Johnson. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next time.